Okay, okay. There are even more advantages, and I'll cover them in just a minute. But first, let me address that question that I know is nagging you in the back of your mind. You're saying to yourself right now, okay, this all sounds great. Everything you've said so far makes a lot of sense, and I'm interested. But hey, pal, what's the catch? We all know that anything that sounds too good to be true probably isn't. Hey, I hear you. Between Enron, Bernie Madoff, and the great stock market meltdowns of the 2000s, a healthy dose of cynicism, skepticism, or both is not only understandable, it's just plain smart. I'll tell you what the catch is, and trust me, it's more like six seconds of turbulence on your six-hour flight to Hawaii on your personal jet plane than a catch. But first, a quick reality check. Just because you've never heard of this before doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, doesn't mean that hundreds of thousands of people aren't already using it, and doesn't mean that all of the advantages that I've talked about aren't absolutely real and sitting there just waiting for you. So, here's the six seconds of turbulence catch. Per IRS rules, you have to fund the plan I'm telling you about with after-tax dollars. In other words, you can't deduct the amount you contribute off your current year's taxes like you can with a qualified plan. That means that if you were to contribute $6,000 this year in an IRA versus this retirement savings vehicle, you'd in reality pay an extra $2,000 in taxes this year, assuming a 33% tax bracket. If you're in a lower tax bracket, naturally, your tax savings would be less. That sounds like a drawback, right? Well, actually, no. To understand why funding with after-tax dollars instead of before-tax dollars like you would with a qualified plan is not a drawback, you just need to understand the alternatives. Answer this philosophical question. If you were a farmer, would you rather pay taxes on the small sack of seeds when you purchase them in the spring, or would you rather pay taxes on your entire harvest when you sell it in the fall? Well, do the math. If a farmer bought a thousand dollars worth of seeds and was taxed at eight percent, he'd pay eighty bucks. But if the farmer planted those seeds and paid the same eight percent of taxes on a fifty thousand dollar harvest, he'd pay four thousand dollars in taxes. Eighty versus four thousand. That's a fifty times increase in taxes paid. The same rationale applies to your retirement savings. In fact, the amount of money you save on upfront taxes with a qualified plan, remember, you'd save $2,000 in taxes by making a $6,000 contribution into a qualified plan, okay, will almost certainly be dwarfed by the taxes you pay at retirement to the tune of about 10 times at least. Here's why. If your $6,000 grows to $100,000 over the course of the next 30 years, remember the magic of compound interest. This is very reasonable. You'll pay at least $33,000 in taxes on the harvest. We already talked about this earlier. That's $33,000 straight to the IRS right when you'll be needing it the most. Would you rather pay $2,000 in taxes right now or $33,000 at least in taxes later? It's as simple as seeds and harvest. I've said it once and I'll say it again. No wonder Uncle Sam loves qualified plans so much. It's his way of protecting his financial future. Okay, okay. So let me go ahead and draw back the curtain and show you what the jet plane of retirement savings vehicle is. Just do me a favor and hear me out because I'm going to admit it right now, right up front, it might sound a little, well, boring right at first. That's because it's a life insurance product called Index Universal Life Contract, or IUL for short. Stick with me, Skipper. Don't be fooled by any stereotypes of what you may think an IUL is. This is different than any kind of whole life or variable life or universal life plan that you may have heard about or purchased in the past. The fact is, IUL is a lot more about savings than it is about life insurance, although it does do a nice job of providing that, too. Hopefully, the tax advantages and principal protection advantages I've told you about are clear enough and big enough to keep you interested. But you also need to know that the IUL, when structured and funded properly, beats the pants off of any other kind of retirement savings plan in every comparison category that matters, including growth potential, risk avoidance, liquidity of funds, flexibility of contributions, flexibility of distributions, longevity of distributions, and fees. Everything. Listen, insurance companies, by law and by track record, are extraordinarily conservative. Yeah, I know that AIG tanked it, and you might be thinking that all insurance companies are going bust. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Life insurance companies that offer IULs, as a rule, have massive, massive cash reserves. One company, as an example, had operating revenues in 2008, the worst year of the recession, of $14 billion dollars. 
earnings of $1.3 billion and cash reserves at the end of the year of $12.8 billion. There's a reason people think of life insurance companies as old, stodgy, conservative curmudgeons. Because they are. Their stodgy curmudgeonness is also part of the reason you've never heard of an IUL before. Life insurance companies thrive with things like risk management, actuarial tables, and other boring life insurance stuff. But they don't know jack when it comes to communications. Go online right now and read their brochures. It's like reading hieroglyphics. Boring, painful, obtuse, hard to understand, and that's just the table of contents. But that doesn't mean that this product, Index Universal Life, is anything less than magnificent for creating wealth. The IUL, Indexed Universal Life, gets its name because it's indexed to the S&P 500, which simply means that it mirrors the growth of the S&P 500, which, for your information, has returned over 9% per year on average for the last 27 years, even with all the crummy years in the 1980s, right after 9-11 and 2007 and 8. Remember that? But here's the best part, and what makes an IUL so darn attractive as a retirement savings vehicle. The reason IUL accounts, when structured properly, won't lose principal is because the lowest return, guaranteed by the contract, is 0%. Or, in technical speak, they have a floor return of 0%. They can't lose money. If the stock market tanks for the year, your IUL contract doesn't take a big hit. It just stays even right where it is. Stated differently, an IUL locks in the gains during up years, but it doesn't participate in the down years. Take that IRA. You can't even come close to competing with that. Everyone knows that portfolio losses are killers because you have to double up just to get back to even. You eliminate that risk with the IUL since your floor is 0% annual growth. No loss of principal. Compare that to the devastating 37.2% loss of the S&P 500 in 2008. If you were indexing your IRA against the S&P 500 and therefore did not have the 0% floor like you would with an IUL contract, if you had a $1 million portfolio on January 1st of 2008, you would have ended the year with just $628,000. Ouch! Even with the big bounce back year of 2009, where the S&P returned 23.6%, the 628000 you had left after getting killed in 2008 would have only grown to about $775,000, still deep in the hole, not with an IUL.